gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Hello and welcome to the Aquarium Slowcast. I am joined by Warning Trek. Yep, I'm here. Again, it's always us doing this. <laughs> Did, nobody asked us to do it. We're just doing it because we can't help ourselves. And so, as I mentioned right a second ago, that we are focusing on Aquarium, uh, which is a... Uh, it's going to be an interesting map to do the slow cast on because it's the concepts around aquarium are definitely not settled and so we can't even pretend as we normally do that we are experts at aquarium so we'll be developing some theories about aquarium in real time perhaps and hopefully that is, that works out yeah not settled and not subtle either there's a big honk and shark in the way of everything and uh it's really weird and almost silly but also very interesting and like everything else in this game a lot of gameplay implications flow from it so uh i'm ready to dive in there whenever you are uh, did you? I I can't even tell if that was conscious well, or not. Well, I mean, we don't have to go that deep. We could just dip our toe in the water. Oh my god! All right, all right. Uh, before you we get too fathom the depths, I will go oh to. Oh my god! Before we right. get we get too far in the notepad you have next to your uh, your document, I'm gonna go ahead and jump into this game, and then I'm gonna actually just start with some pretty obvious facts about this game. Um, oh, let me update the scoreboard. So um, the scoreboard, by the way, there is no real uh, score. We're just going to be looking at one game from a few different leagues. Uh, we're not going to be doing every single league today because we want to. Uh, uh, we don't want to be buried at 20,000 leagues under uh, the amount of games that we'd have to do. Uh, <laughs> what is it? I, I screwed that up. What is it? Is it 20,000? 20, 20,000 20, spy party competitive leagues. There, there we go. Going. Yeah. There we go. Um, but I, anyway, I want to start with some very basic facts about this map, just in case uh, you've been away from the game for a little bit. Uh, this game, it's got a shark. Uh, and uh, I'm just going to play it for a second just so that we can see where the shark's coming in at right there. Um, and so I'm going to start just asking you a few questions. The starting position of the shark is random, right? And there's six positions that I can start at. Uh, only two. Uh, oh, to, uh, okay. One in uh, opposite corners. Um, it always starts at one or the other, which which the interesting thing about that is that if you don't add time, you know for a fact where it's going to end as well, if you pay attention. Interesting. Okay, so yes. are you saying it's the top corners that starts at? I think it's bottom left and top right. Bottom left and top right. Ah, okay. Right. I So I went in with a theory that it was only tops, and that's because I'm pretty sure it always stops at, it always, it always looked at the top right. All right, okay. So there's the two positions. I'm now learning of top right over here and bottom left over here. Um, so that uh, that means that the middle parts of the the shark's path are going to come around, always going to come around between um, uh, 20, 40 and 20 on the minutes. Is that true? Or am I making that up? I think it takes exactly 15 seconds to go across once, but it goes across twice on the bottom and top. It goes both ways and just once through the middle. So it's... Uh, yeah, it starts I, I staggering. Imagine... Yes, exactly. Um, but it does mean that based on one position, you can predict where it's going to be at the end. You can predict, for example, if it's going to be at the top at the very end, which is very significant and also a reason not to time add because then you have to do that math in your head. Okay. Uh, so as we can see right now, I'm also, I realized that I started playing the game. Uh, we're going to get into a big fact about the game pretty early on is that there's an immediate swap. But right now I'm still focusing on some of the parts of the venue. So there's the shark in the way. Uh, one thing you cannot shoot through the shark the shark obviously blocks your path or your line of sight. And um, the shark rotates through. So uh, it's going to come, if it starts in the bottom right, sorry, bottom left, it's going to rotate here uh, over to the bottom right. And then it's going to come over in the middle from the right. It always comes from the side that it left. It's There's no portal shark, at least for now. 
<laughs> Object permanence is a thing here, yes. Uh, you will not be stymied. The shark doesn't just swim off somewhere and come out anywhere else, right? It always You always know where it's going to be next if you saw where it left the screen. And the speed when it's in the middle part of the screen is consistent, but when it gets out off to the right, when it's not blocking very much, it shoots off. So you only have a few seconds of totally unobstructed view, but there are a few seconds of unobstructed view every 15 seconds, like you're saying. Yeah, actually, I think you're right. I think it's a little longer than 15. I timed it once, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, but the main thing is that it's predictable. Um, it mm -hmm. seems, because of that little zoom at the end, it kind of feels like it varies or like there's a fudge factor built in, but there isn't. It's on a very set schedule. All right. Well, um, let's just go ahead and get into the game. And so obviously the Sharks going to be playing a big part in this, and we're going to see how well players um, that we're looking at can anticipate the Sharks' movements and how well they can respond to uh, the suspicion that the spark gi the shark gives to the um, guests behind uh, behind the block. Um, also, the shark's name is Keel. That's the other important piece of information. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started, and starting in three, two, one, go. The shark's name is Keel, and remember that when the developer pretends to hate puns. All right, so like I mentioned before, the play right here is an immediate white swap, and I'm actually gonna pause it real quick. Um, we do start, I actually like this play, we start uh, at the statue. And so this is something where uh, it's hard to plan this going in. It's just you have to be responsive to it. And so I would say this is actually a pretty good body block. I, let's see, I'm seeing how the sniper reacts to it. Sniper highlights and then moves on. So this looks like the swap is just going to be free. So on aquarium track, if you think you've gotten away with the swap, but you're probably a suspect because we always hate the guests that have swapped early on, how do you finish? Well, I think you still have to see what the party gives you, actually. Um, but I do think you have to behave as if it's only suspected, and as if it's suspected less than it would be on another venue. Like, if you do this on ballroom or something, or courtyard, you're going to be the top suspect probably the whole game. If the sniper doesn't mess up, they're going to have that in the back of their heads, and they really might shoot you for completing three more missions. But this is Aquarium. This is different. There are going to be other people behind the shark with possible bugs, maybe late swaps, whatever. There's going to be uncertainty. So I feel like you're not necessarily top suspect later in the game for something like this. I think you maybe just treat it uh, as a little safer than that. Gotcha. Okay, and so uh, we went and we picked up a fingerprint. So right now, one of the paths of the least resistance is a is a, um, a quiet game of swap, inspect, fingerprint, and seduce. I do think that seduce is probably still going to be something you're going to pick up just because it's seduce, and there's a lot of conversation going on in this um, this map. It's a little bit hard to track who is next to who, but you can track movement. I don't know if you've messed around with tracking flirt at all on, on this, but it's to me, it's I mean, always been right. more tracking of how people are moving around. All right, we're ditching that silent game thing. So right now, we are only going to finish with one of the three of, uh, sorry, two of the three of inspect, seduce, and fingerprint at this position. What are you thinking? I think I was going to say before the BB, I actually like the idea of a silent game with no inspect, specifically because if they do suspect that swap, they're going to know that you're going to have to go back to finish statues. Usually you go statueless or not. So if they do suspect the swap, they're going to be waiting for you to make that second statue visit potentially. And if you can deny them that, you could leave them kind of holding the bag when the game ends. Speaking of holding the bag. <laughs> All right, so uh, we do have fingerprint done. So I'm going to pause for a second and just think about this game seems to be going really well. I'm going to be surprised if um, Sunbro is going to pull this out. This has been pretty clean. I do think that we uh, I do think that we don't go back to statues. That's my personal preference because that's I don't know if we've ever come up with terminology, but it's I think we've used Q before. It's a Q to shoot. Uh, you're, it's going to be the most tempting moment to shoot, and we have two minutes. One thing about Aquarium is it's a large map, but you can get a lot done all at once if you need to. You can rush it, but doing the slow p things like picking up inspects and seduction takes a little bit longer than you might expect. Um, so we have two minutes to do two flirts if we want, and that seems to be the play. Yeah, a second statue visit is a cue, banana bread is a cue, and second statue visit is an even bigger cue when you might be suspected for the early swap. I also think that first print, the drink print, is probably free. There was a lot of early activity. The sniper was, I think, zoomed in on every highlight for statues that they made. They were very, very concerned with all those early statue visitors getting all that sniper housekeeping in order, and I think there's a really good chance they missed the print as a result, and if you just two flirt, you're going to win.
All right, well, I'm going to start playing it again at 154. And um, I'm thinking this might actually just end up being a clean game, which it's funny because sometimes the clean games are uh, w good to watch, but they're not all that instructional beyond the initial point of um, uh, just you can play a clean game on Aquarium and not use the shark that much and still win. It's still, it's still a map or yeah, still a well, venue. There is something cool about that, too. There's something you could point out, which is that it's kind of like the idea of bugging w when you're not hidden by the shark. Uh, because it's so easy to get these things done with the cover of the shark, sometimes the snipers just take it for granted that that's when you're going to do it. And they don't guard the amba when it's not covered by the shark as much, and they don't worry about rush swaps, because who would do that when you're going to get the shark to help you later, potentially? Uh, it can be counterintuitive enough to work. And the other thing that it's like, uh, I usually don't focus too much when I'm slow casting because I just have a, have a preference for spies, but actually Aquarium has been pretty f pretty balanced from my ex uh, from my experience. So this is just going to be a win for um, for Smonty. This is just a very clean game. But the other thing is, how do you tackle? <laughs> uh, that was not even okay. Uh, uh, how do you? I wouldn't have even noticed. I uh, well, I, as I got partway through it, I reprimanded myself for doing that one. Um, how do you tackle this map? And because it's a large map but it's only four missions and you can do a lot at once. It's like a really big tan, uh, so you have that disadvantage and so uh, it's not as cramped for getting missions done, but there's a shark in the way. Right, so the way Checkers described this, and this is a good way to look at it, people say, oh wow, the shark, right? What an obstruction, so much occlusion, so many things you can do behind it. But counterbalancing that is the fact that you have a perfect viewing angle as Sniper. Like, I don't think I would change a degree I think you have a nice overview. You have a high courtyard-like angle. You can see pretty much everything. Um, you're a good distance away, but not so much that things are hard to see. It's basically perfect. It would be a disaster for the spy if the shark were not there. Everything else about it is very sniper-heavy, except, of course, for all the pads. So that's kind of the balance they're going for here, yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other thing that I would say about the map that, like, uh, have run into is polluting my highlights with suspicion of what's going on behind the shark. So one of my pieces of advice that I'm going to kind of like track mentally as I go through this cast is seeing if people are doing too much with their highlights. So for example, uh, in most maps, you don't have to keep track of that many suspected X, right? You might right. think, okay, there was a great bug opportunity. I could not get an angle on it, so I'm just going to credit with them with it, but I'm not sure. And there's going to be a few of those, but there's not going to be that many, unlike with Purloin, unlike with uh, a lot of bugs you're going to be able to get away with. Also, being able to hide Purloin um, uh, uh, send-offs. And so because of that, your the highlighting strategy and your attention strategy where you're putting your eyes and where you're putting your memory is really polluted compared to most other maps in my mind. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. Um, and the thing is, I really don't think there's an overpowered highlight strategy here. You can make a really good argument for a few different things, probably just three things realistically. Uh, let's say four total. One, uh, I, I say three instead of four originally because you can always do the general suspicion highlight, right? That's perfectly fine. It works for some people to not track a specific thing, but to jerk, just track people that you were suspicious of at some point, even if you can't remember why later. Fine. But the other three are standard, right? Statues. It could be either statue inspect complete or just statue visits, either one. Uh, real banana bread, which has ups and downs here, but can be very powerful when it works well. Uh, or bar visitors. One of those three, I think. It kind of has to be one of those three. The thing is, I have no idea which one it should be, and I really don't think there's a clear favorite. I think it's so game-specific that what you really need to do is be able to decide based on early game activity, or even switch up in the middle of the game if you're really good, which none of us are that good yet, um, Which what your highlight strategy is going to be. Indeed. The other thing that's a little bit different on this map relative to other maps is I at least can't rely on um, peripheral vision as much as I do on most other maps because the shark pollutes that as well. If you are not, if I'm not looking directly at a conversation circle, so I'm going to go to a, I'm going to zoom for the shark for a little bit. So if there was an ambassador here and I'm just showing the bottom of a conversation where you can still see their feet, but you can't see the top parts of their body the movement around there for like the top line. So like the, um, so like bugging, even if the hand was visible, but there's not a highlight on it, there's enough visual movement and I'm not paying attention to the rest of the body that if I'm not looking directly at it, 
I can still miss it where I usually can depend on my peripheral vision to see it. Mm, yeah, right, right. That, so basically you have to still kind of be focused. You still have to guard it. Um, it's, it's not really as exposed as it seems. Although that did lead, there was an interesting conversation we had on one of the streams not too long ago about the idea of making it so that bugs might be reflected in the feet a tiny bit. Uh, which we, which we like to call jitterbugs. The idea that you'd be able to see just the feet and still be able to tell if a bug has happened, it would just be very, very subtle. It would make it easier to catch bugs, at least here uh, in particular. doesn't really matter anywhere else, though. All right. Well, I got a few more thoughts, but I think that I'm going to move on to the next game because this was just an example of a pretty clean game. Didn't really use the shark all that much, uh, just except for the fact that uh, it's driving the sniper crazy while they're, while they're doing the thing. Um, and uh, so I'm just going to take away the lesson that sometimes you can just play a normal game and win. <laughs> yep, fair. Who knew? Okay, so let me quit out to this one. And then so we are going to be looking at... Um, Pox, Pox. yes. Okay, let me load it up, and then if you have any thoughts about these players while I'm getting it set up, let me know. Um, I'm just going to keep the focus on the game itself, uh, because, you know, I don't want to get too into the SEL weeds where I will talk for hours about anyone uh, when prompted. But I think, even though it seems like there wasn't a lot to say about that last one, the fact that the primary event happened without shark cover is significant in and of itself. All right, um, I think I've got it. A uh, bronze level match from a while back, and I'm going to be starting in three, two, one, go. And it's going to be top right shark to start off. All right, we are letting AI control go off for a little bit. So one of the one of the harder things about um, framing on this map so far in my mind is I have been not as successful in framing specific people as much as framing the party, quote unquote. Uh, yes. Where like just, there's just like a higher itchy or trigger finger rather than your ability to build a case versus a spe specific version. So it's not as easy to do that. So also we got a great reverse drive-by bug. I'm gonna go back and look at that a little bit. Yeah. Um, but before I do, uh, I want to hear if you agree with that general statement that you there's a little bit of a trade-off on this map. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, you get civilian shots about 22% of the time so far competitively here, and it has the second lowest timeout rate competitively of any venue other than Tayan. Tayan is the only one with a lower timeout rate. So something happens. You know, It's almost never just a timeout. Some A shot almost always comes off. A spy very often completes missions. There's a mark there too, which we'll get into. I'll throw some more numbers at you soon enough. But right, you don't actually have to have someone specific in mind because the odds are good that someone is going to fit the frame. If you're, let's say, moderately cautious about when you're BBing, maybe remember a couple of statue visitors, something like that. Uh, that's usually enough to keep people in the suspect pool who could be completing in the sniper's mind. And I would contrast that to, say, a map like Modern, where a lot of the time it's hard for you to induce a shot because you need that person that you're framing to go do one more thing or you need the party to just be a little bit more active. And a lot of the party, if you're paying attention to a specific person, uh, you can't make a plausible case for them being done. Where now with the shark, there's always a little bit of doubt on, okay, well, I wasn't able to track them behind the shark. Was it, were they able to get something past me? It was a little bit higher, but a uh, higher level of paranoia, similar to Tayen, um, where you can get away with, uh, with just maybe framing the party a little bit more. And then the flip side of that is uh, if you finish, in in the typical spy finishing zone of like a 30 second thing you can just get shot even if they're not all that sure about you but you've successfully made them paranoid enough to be risky and then you take the bullet anyway right exactly um actually i'll expand on that a little bit because hey it's a slow cast so we don't need to get back to the game anytime soon uh, a perfect sniper would memorize everyone who was behind the shark at the same time as the ambassador and potentially credit them with bug right but that's not plausible especially on a venue with 28 pads, eight statues, and a bar purloin to boot. So in practice, I think a couple of things end up happening instead, and this speaks to the kind of paranoia you're talking about. First, I think some people just watch certain party goers and notice if they specifically could have the bug. So maybe someone's already become a suspect for some other reason, some mission progress, some kind of error, or perhaps more likely just someone who looks like they're setting up for that kind of bug by, say, moving to the center conversation while the ambassador is at bar statues and likely to walk by afterwards, because you can sort of see it coming sometimes. So sometimes that's what people do. They just watch specific people who are already suspects to see if they could plausibly have a bug, whether it's visible or not. The risk there for the sniper is that the bug is one of the first suspicious things they do, so it happens before they're on their radar. That's the risk. The second thing they can do, which is a lot hazier, again, speaking to that paranoia, is treating this a little bit like a three out of five venue, 
or maybe a three and a half out of five venue, 3.5 out of five. The point five is that you're probably not assuming literally anyone with three missions done has bugged. And you can't perfectly track everyone who could have either. So maybe your shot threshold goes up or down based on how generally vulnerable the AMBA felt that game. Were they hanging out at windows and books a lot? If so, they would have been very hard to bug. Was their back to you in one of the front or side conversations? Hard to bug again. Or were they, were they behind the shark over and over again? Were they crammed in the back of conversations over and over again? You might not have a specific person in mind who could have bugged, and you might not be crediting everyone with a bug, but you might have a sense that the ambassador was vulnerable all game, and therefore you'll change your, thought, your uh, shot threshold at the end when someone does look like they're competing, just say their third soft tell. That makes sense to me. So when you say the three out of five, I'm also curious about which missions you de-emphasize in that out of five. Yeah, so that's the crazy thing, right? Just like I mentioned, there were three like equally viable highlight strategies here. A lot of these missions are really, really viable too. I actually want to quiz you again because I have the numbers in front of me and you actually do really well at these usually. So what do you think the most commonly completed missions in SCL Aquarium games are? Ooh, um, well... Let's start off top down the list, most common. Most common, the very most common is probably banana bread correct 76 and a half percent of the time next most common is tough though because normally i would say seduce but um uh i'm just gonna go with seduce and then inspect correct seduce is 61 percent, and then inspect this is where things get interesting inspect Ooh. is sixth sixth it is below bug purloin and swap that is fascinating that's ridiculous, right? Yeah, okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, typically, so right now we're kind of on script with the banana bread and seduce. Uh, so, the inspect. So, I guess that is the spies reacting to the, what we're saying about the paranoia, where they really don't want to be the ones caught with their hand in their cookie jar of going back for the second inspect. Yes, uh, because you can't actually hide your inspects. You're going to be seen there. If you do the inspects properly or even close to it, it's really hard. Even if you rush behind the swap, I've seen people try to do this, try to get to the statues and get back like from the bar, one of those bar pads to the back statues. I've seen people do it with small man. The shark comes by, they leave the side pad from the bar, go to the statue, swap, come right back. Boom, boom, right? You could get cheap inspects like that done, but you're taking this huge hardtail style risk for half of a soft tail. If you don't do that, on the other hand, the shark can't help you. You're going to be seen there. They're going to have time to shoot you. You're married. You're, you're cemented. Your feet are cemented to that pad, basically. And that kind of vulnerability feels really bad in a map like this where you want to be able to relax, react to the shark and, and uh, use its, uh, its bulk to your advantage. So it feels really bad to kind of make the sniper's job easier like that by locking yourself into place uh, and have to go twice, no less. That is interesting. Okay, so fourth is probably, or sorry, third, then might be bug. It is. You're three for three, 45% of the time. So almost half of the games, someone does bug. That's all people. That's not like a spy who likes to bug or is great at bugs. This is everybody completing bug about half the time in SCL. That is interesting. And the, the last ones, I'm, I'm going to guess, uh, so it was inspected six. So banana bread, seduce, bug, uh, Purloin? Uh, Purloin is just after bug. The last two are fingerprint and microfilm, and there's a pretty big gap between them. In fact, swap, inspect, and fingerprint are all within a few percentage points of each other near the bottom. Mm. The microfilm is 8%. So that's interesting. So uh, it's, I'd also love, I mean, I, I'm, I'm almost positive you probably don't have uh, stats on uh, direct transfer or action transfer because of the replays, no. or do you? Yeah. Yeah. No, not yet. But uh, that is a good question. I'm actually going to guess it's more animation transfer because you're going to get those opportunities. And actually, that's going to factor into some of the games uh, we're going to cast later here. But uh, just to reiterate something else, too, um, the most common mission win setup on Aquarium specifically the mission count that leads to a mission win and it makes up a fifth of all mission wins is contact bug seduce purloin um that's not the same as saying that those are the most commonly completed missions in this case they're the same four but that's the most common combination in games uh, that reach mission win mm -hmm. so so yeah bug and purloin are the choices here after the first two obvious ones over swap over inspect over fingerprint uh so it's just funny to me that two of these soft tells are in the bottom three missions completed so what's interesting to me there is um, there's sort of a script then already forming in people's minds about Aquarium because of the, I wouldn't say A4 of 8 uh, 
nature and the fact that you can get away with bug is that if you could get, if you could get away with bug on any of the other any four of eight maps you would do that setup most of the time now inspect is sort of right. the 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 uh and you would do exception the there that you're saying. Yeah. yeah exactly you would do that if you could get a free bug on any other four of eight map you are thinking about the other you are thinking great well great i just need to get seduction contact and probably inspect done um inspection changes a little bit and it's interesting with the um the microfilm being that low to me that that's a holdover from how bad microfilm is on a lot of other maps because that to me doesn't make as much sense so i think that one hopefully evolves a bit uh, i do think that um i mean so with animation transfer obviously you have the you have the the shark helping you out um oh actually does it help you out twice too i'm checking something uh, yeah, it goes back the same way it just came, um, potentially. So it'll go by the bottom twice. Um, it's, it, can, it can really help, yeah. But there are some reasons for it, I think. I think you are dead on in that people are not used to doing it because it's not as viable in other places. So this is just sort of a holdover, and they're gonna, that number's going to come up. I believe that. But there are a couple of rational reasons to like it less, too. One is that with something like Bug, you can just do it, and it's done. Boom, boom. Microfilm is a time commitment. Even when you do a quick version of it, it's a time commitment. And clearly, the animation version is the more powerful of the two here, and that's the one that takes longer. So it factors in with pacing a little bit, and it's already a big venue. So that's one reason to like it a little less than something like Bug. Um, the other thing uh, is that... Oh, how was I going to put this? Oh, right. Purloin, if you do a delegate, can put you into a pending status. That is a nice thing to have, because you don't really need to finish it, finish it, by the time the clock runs out. You just need to delegate by the time the clock runs out, and that can also lead to confusion. That's not true with microfilm either. So there are a couple of things about microfilm that I think are a little difficult there. Um, it's a little more of a pacing thing. I think it's better if you can do it, but the degree of difficulty is actually a little bit higher. You have to give more thought to it. You can't play quite as improvisationally as you might want to here with things like Bug or Swap or Purloin or whatever, which you can just sort of do uh, as the opportunity arises. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and restart this game at about uh, 3.30, and we're going to see where uh, Pox is. We, we've so far in this game, specifically, we've burned about 30 seconds of time without doing anything, um, but it looks like we're about to bug here. So starting at 3.30, and 3, 2, 1, go. Yep, so that's a reverse drive-by, and it's just invisible. And it's not a place where you would camp out to wait for the ambassador bug exactly. I mean, it's pretty good, but it's not one of the more obvious spots. It wasn't super obvious the ambo was going to come by. I think we might have been there a little bit beforehand. It's just a really good bug. You might get credited with it, but even as the kind of bug you might get credited with, it's not super suspicious. It's just good. Yeah, and the fact that the ambassador passes by there is no guarantee. Uh, so it was just great timing. Like we couldn't have we couldn't have anticipated also being covered by the shark. It was just a, a great opportunism. And so far, the the people that I've played are the uh the spies that have already practiced opportunism on other maps have really shown so far yeah uh so mission site density is banana really bread. good for opportunists in general i'm also gonna pause the banana bread because the banana bread is really interesting to me on this map because i've this is the map when i've watched other people play that there has been more assumes about the real status than a lot of other maps given how many people are still in conversations um um when it goes off because like on courtyard for example there's a ton of people in there and there's not as many assume reels uh or assumptions about yeah assume reels um but this one is interesting so i'm gonna see if they do anything about it and they do actually well sorry no they're just making they're making the typical little well lights. first of all hats off to Cotty. five really quick good high confidence low lights they come out real fast and they are all correct as far as i can see um this is not a great banana bread when you look around, what you, you do though you do have the most important factor, which is that we're in with the real double agent, so we got the mission done, right? We're actually trading our lowlights for something at least, uh, specific. And our conversation is the fullest one. So at minimum, you know you have some friends here. You have some fellow suspects for the real. But when you look around, you can see so this, the suspected double agent, when this goes off, let me see. There are really not that many people. Seek hasn't come in yet. There are three people in the other conversation who could have a real. So if you did want to assume real, you'd also get, let's say, three more lowlights, potentially, two or three more lowlights. That's a pretty big trade-off, especially because, look at this too, the shark is not meaningfully blocking any conversation for these purposes. The tail, I think, is coming by, the bottom right conversation, that's it. If the shark is covering up a significant portion of any of these conversations, especially if it's like dead center, right, 
you can't be confident that someone did not split. It's really hard. You can't rely on those low lights unless you only take the absolute safest ones. That's actually really scary as someone who values low lights quite a bit. You know, they could split. They could split behind that middle shark and you just don't know. So the confidence you're going to have in the low lights you do get if the shark is anywhere near the middle of the screen is way down. I think that is a great point. I think just in general, be being using the BB during the shark passing uh, is really strong because it also strikes me with paranoia. Um, I, I was just playing versus Urand, and one of Urand's habits is to do stuff during the banana bread. So it makes me extremely paranoid in multiple directions because I'm paranoid that it's covering up something. I'm paranoid that it's covering up something with shark. I'm paranoid it's covering up something that's not with the shark just because on maps without the shark, they're also using cover up. So the banana bread one is this clear and just nothing is happening and the ambassador's in motion like this where you have pretty good job of, or you pretty easy... Um, uh, ability to track where they're going. I mean, sure, you do get the banana bread, uh, but banana bread is something that is more flexible now because of all the, like you're saying, uh, uh, non-perfect information that it's giving about the people that the shark's over. Yeah, and I mentioned earlier that if you take the shark away, the sniper's position is absolutely dominant. So that's what you've just given them. If you're Pox, you've just given the sniper a banana bread without the shark really in the way which means you've given them a banana bread where they can see the whole party almost immediately with high confidence. That is an absolute gift when normally it, there'd be a nightmare here, right? A shark in the middle and you just don't know how to react to it. That's one of the reasons that these low lights fly out of Cadiz's laser so quickly and so confidently. All right. Um, so this is, I want to say this game is still pre fairly even. I would give a little bit of an advantage to the spy at this point, but I am curious how it plays out just because we have two and a half ish missions done and we're a little bit um, over pace. So I'm going to guess Pox is coming with this, but I'm going to go ahead and restart at 2.30 and go in three, two, one, go. All right, so we're probably just going to hang out here uh, and pick up um, our seduction target. I'm also curious about how often people time out on this map because the the most obvious thing that you get from another time out is a few more passes of the shark. And so it actually gets you something where, uh, actually, I'm going to pause and talk about this for a second. I, we, we've talked about this. I've at least I've heard conversations about this before. But as opposed to other maps, like let's say Courtyard, Courtyard time ads sometimes aren't all that great. Because if Ambassador and Swap and Purloin are guarded, and there are, there are a bunch of people sitting with possible flirts, possible inspects, uh, and possible BBs, they still have to have one more mission to push them over that threshold, and there's not a guarantee that that's going to happen. The only thing that really you throw in there is maybe another fingerprint gets gets out there, and a few more people that could have bugged early in the game go and inspect. But there's nothing that changes it. Where sometimes you can you can time it a few times in courtyard, and there still won't be a time or sorry a shot that goes off. Where in this map you are there's another few passes of the shark, and something happens behind the shark every time that happens. You throw in more. Uh, uh, low confidence about the people that are there that like maybe they got something in there possibly they did something in there right it is more valuable for that reason uh it creates the opportunities for possible uh finishers in a way that other venues don't but accordingly it is very hard to get away with time ads here the sniper basically just has to forget about them and that's plausible because there's a lot going on and they can be distracted by a lot of things but it's one of those things where if they are trying to catch time ads a bit they are almost definitely going to. And by catch, I mean significantly narrow down the party after a time ad has taken place. There's just really nowhere to hide, unless you literally hide in that corner, which we saw in the Shark Weekend tournament. Uh, Lazy Bear, every game, took Taft, went to the far top right corner, the window pad there, uh, and the brown of Taft's suit blends in with the floor enough that you can't see him sticking out. He did this every game. The nature of the format is that you play two games, a giant round robin against everyone, so no one had time to study anyone's replays. You could take one spy game, one sniper game, and just cheese the hell out of it over and over again. And that's what he did. Basically, every game he did that as Taft until he went into the second day. And obviously it worked for him because he made it to the second day, the top four. So pretty cool there. Um, so unless you do something like that, though, it's really hard to get away with the time ad if the sniper remembers it at all. It's one of those things where you've seen this before, I'm sure. Some games you just forget to check for it. If that happens, you can get away with it. But it, unless that happens, though, you're probably going to get burned for it. And it feels fair for the reason you mentioned, which is that the time ad can be really valuable. And you also don't need it. There's like four minutes here. People argued at first about whether or not there was too much time on it, given the mission density and how much you could get away with behind the shark. I think people have settled on the idea 
the, the default time is actually pretty good, but it's definitely not uh, too short. Indeed. All right. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start it back up. I'm at 210. Okay. And so right now we're just deciding what the final mission is going to be out of this setup. We have Seduce done, um, and we have Bug, and we have Contact. We probably assume we got clean with the Bug, and I'm just not sure what we do for the last one. Now, Purloin's another one of those ones where um, the the information that you give the sniper when you purloin, uh, it doesn't have anything to do with the shark. You can't you can't grab a drink, or sorry, it's hard to grab a drink and get out of there behind the shark without ever out the spy, sniper ever being able to know that you were there in the first place. That part is hard. You can obviously purloin behind the shark, and if it's your final mission. Uh, try to hide before the sniper can recognize what's going on and you can do things like uh, uh send someone to you can delegate the purloin if they're over you by uh one of the one of the big plays that i've seen come out of um, aquarium is moving next to someone while the shark going over delegate and then move back to where you were in the beginning which is fun yeah uh i did exactly that in one of my scl matches i made it so that the middle shark was coming across i entered delegated immediately left and i picked a faster character so it looked like it was basically just one continuous path obviously if you time it perfectly you know it's not but i found it worked pretty well uh and those are the two ways to do it as you mentioned one is that don't be seen delegating don't ever be seen entering the conversation the other uh specifically as you say is the sharks going across at the top and blocking the delegate so it's kind of like going to back statues to swap to finish they have to decide to shoot you before the shark comes over potentially right. so they don't have to have maybe a second or two at the end they have to make that gut check decision as you approach the bar as you approach the statues and yeah it looks like it's just a delegate here and it works and hey what do you know the numbers hold up there are those four missions again yeah, just checking out the delegate real quick here. Uh, it happens to delegate to a low light, um, and that seems to be pretty much it. It doesn't seem like there's much reaction from Cotty on on the delegate. Now, one thing I am going to bring up real quick, just in case people uh, forget, uh, you can always tell if the purloin has gone off, even if you can't see the list, the disappearing of the list, because Toby acts differently with his hands. Uh, he won't make the motion to go pick up the list. So sometimes people look for the fade. You don't need to. You only have to look at how Toby reacts. Um, that's gonna, that's going to be review for most of our viewers, but just putting it out there. That sometimes oh, I see yeah, people I'm zooming right. in to see the fade, and you don't need to. Yeah, I've seen people even in Iron who hear this about, and they go, oh my god, oh wow, that's going to help me out on Terrace so much in particular, because Iron loves Terrace for some reason. Uh, kind of same thing there. You can't always get a good look. In fact, I know some people, I think Lazy Bear likes to do this, just looks at the arrow over Toby's head in case the shark is blocking um and just sees the way the arrow bobs because the arrow bobs differently too depending on whether or not he picks up the list so if you really want to you can get in pretty deep with this stuff uh but there is something to say here about what looks like an otherwise clean game obviously the bug was good the reason the purloin works it's not really covered obviously it goes to a low light that might help certainly but it also means that if they notice if they're paying attention they have a really good idea who did it the reason it works is because you get two three missions done without being a suspect it's really hard to catch a purloin just coming from anywhere. It's not that hard to catch it coming from a suspect if you have a few sus suspects. It's very hard to catch it coming from the party in general if you're not already tracking something specifically. So Pox wins this game with a very ordinary purloin, but they really win it because they got to that point where all they had to do was the purloin and they weren't even a suspect because they never went to statues, never got caught doing anything you know, wonky or fancy or anything like that. If you can get to three missions on Aquarium without being a suspect, you almost always win. All right. Well, I'm ready to move on to the next game if you are. Yes. All right. And then we have, uh, are we starting? We're starting the two Screw Loose Minty Rug games, correct? Yes, yeah, screw loose as spy first. All right. All right. Um, hopping in and screw loose as Disney. Oh, let me let me update the scoreboard real quick. Yeah, what's fun about these next two games is that these were actually played by these two competitors back to back in one match uh, in SCL Silver. These are consecutive games played. All right, ready to go. Starting in three, two, one, playing it. And so Aquarium, just in general, because there's so much more freedom um, in how these spies play, 
it lends itself a little bit more to study to figure out what your opponent's habits are. I don't know how hard those habits are, whether or not they'll play pretty similar in each game, or if they have a bag of tricks, more like, where if a game's going a certain way, they like to play a certain way, and they have like three or four main play styles, and they typically stick to those, and it helps you uh, infer about what missions you don't have to look at. I don't know if we know that much yet, but it feels like that kind of map. Yeah, I would say this. I would say this is a little research resistant compared to most most venues. Uh, I feel like it's so much based on that opportunism and what presents itself, and that there are very few missions that people are not that comfortable with. I think microfilm would be the only exception. But I do think that if someone likes, for example, being in the center conversation and doing that thing where you crash into the amba and then go right back to your spot, they tend to do that over and over again. The problem is, what's knowing that get you? Nothing. <laughs> Yeah, so the one that the, the habits that seem to come up the most in this map would be whether or not they respect microfilm um, and whether or not they swap. And then the other things seem to just be generally in play. Yeah, I would say whether or not they want the soft tail finish or the swap purloin combo is one of the big things uh, for sure. Whether or not they prioritize the good banana bread is a little bit of something there too. That's about it. I don't think there's a whole lot else going on there. I think it could change... Uh, but other than microfilm, yeah, I wouldn't feel confident ruling anything out. I guess some people really like to lean into the shark in the sense that they deliberately want to do that last mission behind the shark. Other people want something else like the delegate to happen behind the shark. So I guess if I had to pick one thing, I'd say, do they like completing behind the shark or not? Um, also, just a general question that I don't know if you all have an opinion about. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to pause at 2.11 just because I'm trying to figure out uh, something about what's happened there. But before I go into that... Um, do you prefer to do multiple things behind the shark or just one thing and then let them see the, the other three things and then um, just try to finish it uh, where you basically you finish as a highlight, but not with enough suspicion to, to get shot? It really depends. I mean, I as time goes on, I, I've learned to love winning as the top suspect uh, because I have to. <laughs> It used to be that if you could mission win as a neutral light, and by neutral light, I don't literally mean just literally a neutral light. Sometimes that just means you didn't go to statues. Big deal, right? You can still be top suspect. It depends on what the highlights are for. But highlight is a shorthand for suspect. If you can mission win and you're not even on their radar, that feels the best. The higher up I get, the less plausible that is. So I've had to make my peace with the idea that you want them to consider shooting you and then decide not to. Um, that can upset them more. And it's also just kind of how you have to win when you get above a certain level most of the time. So uh, I don't know if it's, I don't know if I prefer it. I probably don't, uh, but I've sure gotten used to it. And so this is also an interesting map in that there is a ton of Yomi, which sometimes it's a bit hard to predict what happens with that. But I haven't seen too many people go for low light plays because everything seems so difficult to try to anticipate what specific snipers will consider low lightable. It's hard to get into their heads about how they're feeling nervous about the game, about whether or not they're going to low light you. And because there's so many more ample opportunities for the spy to win without a low light, that doesn't seem to do that. So it, I'm, I'm going to vaguely suggest that people also lean into um, what feel like good low lights to them. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's what's interesting. So this compounds the issues with low lighting or fishing for low lights in particular. So you already have the standard problem of you're trying to guess what the sniper can and can't see. When you're angling for a low light, you want to be seen. When you're not, you don't, right? So sometimes you'll do something, you'll do some sick bounce or crazy path or something like that, or you'll pick up a briefcase that does not have a fingerprint on it, or you go back to the same statue set, you'll do one of a hundred things designed to be uh, less suspicious if the sniper notices and maybe they low light for you if they have uh, a habit of doing that sort of thing. But you never know what they're actually going to notice, right? And that's true on any venue. That's not an aquarium specific thing. Very often we'll see people do some crazy briefcase redirect and the sniper doesn't notice or doesn't care. And it's just wasted effort, wasted time because they don't get the low light. Maybe it's worth it. Maybe they had an X percentage chance of getting the low light and it didn't work, but it was worth the chance. I don't know. But if it doesn't take, it doesn't take. And it's not worth anything because they might not see it, might not care. On top of those standard problems of might not see it, might not care, now you have might not be able to see it, might have no idea, might not even know if there was something else behind the shark that caused you to do the redirect, right, that they couldn't see, some kind of collision. So now even if they are the kind of person who will reward you for it, are the kind of person who tries to see it, they might not even be able to. So fishing for low lights, that's not a pun. That's just what everyone says. <laughs> um, there's no other way to say it. 
A fishing for lowlights, um, it kind of makes even less sense on this venue than most. It doesn't mean it can't be done. It's just that it's so much harder to be confident that the sniper's even going to see it, let alone reward you for it. I do want to uh, go back to something you said, though, when you said, what are you looking for, like, research-wise, uh, skill sets, tendencies? I will say that I do want to see if a spy I'm playing has shown a good command of the shark's location. Do they have a good sense of the angles and the timing? Most do after a few games, but a few people are already masterful at it. Indeed. And I actually want to go back to the the low lighting idea in general. So this is this is something that is I'm just kind of forming in my head, I'm just going along. It's something that's kind of intuitive, so I don't think people really talked about it very much. But low lighting is generally something that the sniper does when they're not busy. So if they're guarding something, if they're guarding purloin, if they're looking at the tray, if they're looking at a swap, if they're looking at um, guarding bug, they're not low lighting. And so uh, as opposed to other maps where it's kind of predictable when the party slows down and they're in the kind of the calm mode, low lights are usually taken from positions of strength, I feel like, on most maps. This is almost the opposite, where a lot of the low lighting that I'm seeing is almost low lights for desperation. They need to narrow down the party by some measure. And so they're low lighting because they have to, similar to Tain a little bit. Because I like, love that point. Uh, not the last point you made, but the, the point just before <laughs> it about low lights. Uh, no, no, that's a good point too. But I like the general point of low lights coming from a position of strength. Let's say, let's clarify it slightly. How about from a position of comfort mm -hmm. or a position of yeah. idleness, right? It's almost like you have cer a certain number of computer cycles in your sniper brain. And if they're not being used on guarding anything because nothing's happening, you spend them somewhere else. You can't not spend them. They're going to expire at the end of the game. They're expiring every moment you don't use them so then suddenly you dip into well that was a pretty weird path maybe i should low light for it low lights like that are thoughtful and nuanced and subtle which means they require a lot of thought and attention they're not rote like statue highlights or like guarding mission sites are for campers for example where you can just kind of do it without thinking you can't really ever do behavioral low lights without thinking that would defeat the entire purpose so by definition it sort of only has to happen when you have downtime so i think that's a really really good observation that has applicability uh, on other venues too yeah and i also like the way that i think the the final phrasing of that with comfort is a it's a great way to put it so in general on most maps um low lights come from a place of comfort on other maps there's sometimes where you know we we've, we've seen all the time in casts where they'll just start low lighting because they feel like they have to and they'll low light for with very little thought but the actual real low lighting comes from like you're saying there's very few rote low lights that i can think of unless you've decided beforehand that someone has such like never fake bbs for example and you don't even think about it you just low light for example or the fake bbs right. but besides that you're right there's not really a corollary for like the statue highlights there's not a statue low light or something that someone goes and does and you just you just low light for them the closest thing is out of conversation for bb and i mean yeah i mean you're just you're just low lighting people that are outside but i'm not really talking about those i'm talking about the ones where you're not totally sure you're right 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 yeah no that's that's exactly right um and it's 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 definitely useful to think about kind of the reasons you low light someone um and that that's there's that's a reason to do one or the other uh that's a reason to maybe take only hard low lights is that you turn it into a reflex something that you can do with muscle memory and devote your thoughts to something else if you want to take behavioral low lights you can but by definition they're always going to eat up thought because they have to be thoughtful to be good all right well, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'm I'm so I'm trying to figure out something that happens. Real, I, it was so long ago that we were playing in this game uh, that I saw something happen that I wanted to try to figure out what well, was going on. While you're thinking about that, I do want to expound on something else I just remembered, uh, which is that you mentioned that sometimes people take low lights because they feel they need to. That is a totally different class of low light than behavioral low lights. Mm -hmm. If you yeah. feel you're behind, like you miss a purloin and you're like, I straight up do not know who did this. You might start low lighting for takes a drink afterwards, right? That's a very common thing. Take a drink after the purloin has already gone off because you know that person, unless they're getting a fingerprint, just straight up wasting time or angling for a low light. So fine, whatever. That is different than behavioral low lights. That is someone making a meta decision about where they think they are in the game and upping their risk threshold for being wrong about a low light because they think they're going to lose anyway. That's a totally different consideration, even though it seems like the same kind of idea because you're taking low lights you're not sure about. Uh, they're taking uh, sub-hard low lights, right? Sub-certain low lights. It's actually a totally different thought process because it's a meta decision rather than an individual decision about each character. Yeah, agreed. It's, yeah, just like how there are highlights versus particular players or like for versus particular players. It's not about the state of the game, but if you low light, I don't know, you highlight Smallman every time, for example, that sort of thing. Um, yeah. I'm trying to figure out, so at 217, 
um, all of a sudden I see a, a flurry of highlights go off, and I'm not sure why. Uh, so at uh, at 217, there are very very purposeful highlights, and they're in weird spaces that do not seem connected to uh, me. Okay, okay. So my best guess here is that look, so look at the party as a whole, right? Only two people, or three people are out of conversation, right? And look at these two full conversations with SDAs, right? This is a great time to contact. Great time. So good that the fact that a contact has not gone off means it's very likely the spy is not in those two conversations. That is very interesting. And, and that is what I'm almost positive that's what Minty has said and is correct, as it turns out, because Screw is trying to do something else. Right. So unfortunately, we... Yeah, sorry, this is the banana bread not taken, right? So it's really good to say, okay, that's a bad banana bread. I'm going to take advantage of it, or I'm going to avoid doing it, or whatever. Um, but when you see a situation, and this happens, I'd say, after a 1,000 games, right? You see a game, I know you've had this happen, where you're watching the game, nothing's happening. And you feel this little tingle, like, here it comes. Here comes the banana bread. Because you recognize, as a sniper, that this looks like a good time to do it. Some, I mean, I would guess you have very often anticipated a banana bread a few seconds before it actually happens, right? Yes. You can even say it in your head. Right, you do. And like, here it comes. And when it doesn't, the information is not as clear, but you still have information. And it's really tempting. It's risky, but it's really tempting at that point to say, why didn't it come off? It's because they're doing something else. So maybe, so you could look at a few things. You could look at people who are not in those two conversations. That's what Minty Rug did, right? Anyone who's not in those two conversations, although it turns out the spies behind the shark, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, it could be that they're not in one of the conversations they can't take advantage of it. The other thing could be they're in one of those conversations, but they're talking. They're flirting. So you also want to notice potentially the talkers like that. Or they're about to delegate, and then they're going to be the after it. There are a few answers, which is why it's really risky to go all in on any of them. But it is actually pretty high, I think, at that point, that it is one of those things. And that uh, the spy is not just someone sitting calmly in a conversation doing nothing. Because why would they? Right. And also, there's not that many highlights. We haven't used highlights on a lot of different things. It doesn't look like Minty is someone that highlights for a statue. So if you if you keep your highlights clean on this map, you can do things like uh, trying to track where uh, you can see if those um, people are going into conversations and talking really quickly, because I would say that a lot of spies kind of seduce uh, without any fear on this map. Yes. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. If if those highlights had already been used on like three or four statue visitors or bar visitors or something, switching them off in time would be very difficult to do properly. The fact that they were open and that Minty Rug was able to slot that in in the middle of the game uh, actually really paid off there. All right. All right, well, I'm going to pick back up. Oh, actually, I'm going I'm to start right where we're doing those highlights again, um, starting right now. And then I'm going to look at this bug that comes across. We and actually... We are... <laughs> we're riding the shark exactly and i think we uh, i noticed uh even when we're pathing over we actually uh we we curve our path so that the shark is in the middle of the path when we're going over there and i actually want to see on the interactive cam uh if that curve could be seen uh no 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 not really that wow nope. screwless has a screwless might have a perfect um uh oh that's funny yeah if i didn't see the if i didn't see the arrow you would just never see him until he's at oh i guess you can see the top of his head barely see the top of his head when he first leaves yeah, yeah. it's almost perfect it's 95 percent perfect it's as good as you could hope really good command there of the shark and what's interesting too is that we saw those highlights go off because these are the people who maybe couldn't take advantage of that banana bread right so i'm gonna highlight all of them but screw was behind the shark and so far now that he's visible again has not been bumped up to be among that group so even though it was a really good move for minty the logic was sound and it happened to be right in this case, might have missed the person behind the shark who happens to be the spy. And I also like that because uh, Screwless's feet were never seen. So we don't even know what kind of path they took, if it was really close to Ambassador or not. Because one of the one of the suspicious things is if you see of the feet near the Ambassador, you see them move around a little bit instead of a straight line. So Screwless took an, uh, kind of an awkward path because they walked around, but it, behind the shark, it's completely invisible. And then basically it's like a magic trick where it's one of those ones where you throw the sheet up and then it comes down and there's nothing there where the shark goes up and then all of a sudden we don't see any part of their body essentially until they're at bookcase. Yeah, yeah. And he does kind of look like a magician, doesn't he? Kind of got that oily, you know, <laughs> whole outfit. Yeah, yeah. That's all I'm going to be able to think of now is that he's a magician. All right. So we step into a conversation with... Oh, we, we get highlight, do we? Um, I'm trying to... See, I'm going back to that highlight real quick. Um, we yeah, might just be getting highlight for, and so at 145 is the highlight. Oh, it's also a subtle highlight too. Uh, we hold the laser and um, let uh, Disney walk into it at yes. 142. Um, interesting. 
So I guess that might just be for, um, and it's hard to get in the head of it, but it might just be for microfilm. It could be for microfilm. It could be for pathing by the AMBA. It could be actually Minty following through on what I mentioned before and actually realizes, oh, this was one of the people, but nope. Look at this. Look at the low light. Yeah. Okay. okay so, this is actually really significant. All right. I'm going to go back to 136. Yeah. And then we need bread. to analyze this a little bit. Okay. So we see that we have the bread. banana bread and then uh, we bail while the shark's in motion. I'm actually switched to interactive yes. bucket. We bail to a conversation the without the double agent and get low lit for not having a reel. Interesting. Yeah. No, I think, I think you're absolutely right. So I mentioned earlier, you know, that uh, the sniper, uh, the spy had given the sniper a real clean look at the banana bread because the shark wasn't including it. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. If the shark is in the middle, I mean, I had it as a hypothetical. I had no idea this was going to happen when I said that, but it's perfect now. Um, so we go to around, yeah, 136. The shark is right in the middle of the screen. You can see a good chunk of the party, but there's a lot of people you just don't know. You just don't know where they're going to be when this goes off. So when it goes off, red. you can either not be sure and just not get as much information as you would like, or you can take a bit of a risk, which is exactly what Minty Rug does, and they pick the wrong time to take that risk because Screw Loose takes advantage as in, and is in a completely different conversation when they emerge. It's also interesting that that knocked out um, when they were doing that, except for the spy, it knocked out correctly a ton of highlights for them in that conversation circle where they were willing to um, low light a bunch of the people that were from highlights from the not taking the banana bread earlier one. So earlier they didn't take the banana bread uh, and that was suspicious during a good time. And then they were in a non BB conversation when the BP went off. So it makes total sense for everybody else to get low lit in that situation. It's just uh, screw loose being able to uh, shimmy over to the other conversation during the banana bread to make it look like they were there all along. Yeah. Yeah. It uses the shark twice and it works both times. And you get, and because they, I Minty mean, rug was able to knock out all those people. That's why they were willing to take that risk. You'd say, why take that risk, right? You low lit the spy. You can't be sure that they weren't in that conversation, you know, before, but this is why, because they saw an opportunity to cut this party way down. If they're right, they basically probably win. They just weren't right, but they couldn't resist the lore of all those low lights. The other thing that I want to, uh, this is making me think more about that I don't know why I haven't thought about this, but the middle shark path is maybe the most uh, anxiety inducing. It's also the one that happens the least. And so maybe focusing in on making sure that something's happening, uh, whether it's behind the shark or not on the shark, that's the most stressful shark passage for the sniper, uh, unless there's something else going on where it just happens like ambassadors in the top left-hand corner or something like that. But typically that covers the, the big meat of the party because it gets right through the... Um, uh, it gets through the, the conversation circles, which a lot can happen in. Right. It covers the top of both conversation circles. Uh, it covers the center there. It can cover the bar. It's, it's just really rough. And then you can see here at the end, by the way, screw loose. I'm not sure what time you're at now. Uh, I can uh, I can go to whatever time you're at. Yeah, I mean, after the low light, screw loose just grabs a book, basically. Uh, this is like the last 20 seconds. Gotcha. And deliberately goes back when, you, when they know the shark is about to emerge and they're going to be completely hidden. Um, they don't need to because they're low lit, but they can't know for sure that they are. So that was all shark. The bug happens behind the shark. Not getting the initial highlight with the other group happens behind the shark. BB split happens behind the shark. And the second half of the microfilm happens behind the shark. Even the first green microfilm happened just as the shark was going by. Uh, might have been seen, might have not. But basically, basically everything they did that game was with the aid of the shark. And so that, that funnels into what we were talking about before about whether or not you choose to do one thing behind the shark and then uh, you hope it screws up the mission count and then you end with a highlight, uh, a spy, or if you do everything behind the shark and try to just get away with everything clean. Yep, and in this case, got away with pretty much everything. But I'm still really impressed by that decision Minty made. It had a chance to win them the game, uh, but then they took another risk. That's the problem. When you're that kind of risk-taking sniper, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Usually it works in one game and fails in the next. In this case, it works in the first half of the game and fails in the second. All right. Well, uh, I think that's it for this one. And so uh, we are going to be seeing um, uh, the game where the roles are going to be reversed and Minty Rug is going to be Spy versus Screwloose's Sniper. Unless you have anything else to say about this one. No, no. I just think it's cool that we're able to do back-to-back -back games like this. These games happen back-to-back -back in an actual silver match uh, in real life. All righty. Uh, or are we starting out? Um, let me switch to the Sniper reticle. And I might as well just put... Um, hair up in there oh what is she called in this uh what is, she called? Is, it, is it frizzy is it hair oh that's right there's a special name it's a red dress 
Right? I think I think Cletos calls her Oprah, so that's probably yeah. Cletos. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Nice call. This is that this is that research you do even on just casting habits. <laughs> yeah, it's Cletos this thing. I actually did look at it once and I remember thinking, oh, these must be all the names Cletos likes. All right. All right, starting in three, two, one, playing it. So the other fun thing is because Aquarium has so many paths to winning, uh, you have the you have the ability to uh, either play just like they did and have a little bit of Yomi on that one or play completely differently. Big book rush, by the way, at the beginning of this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is not as useful as the other rushes, bar rushes, statue rushes, whatever. Everyone crowds the Amba. Book rush is definitely the least valuable. Um, and in this case, unless we're going to do anything with it, we're not even going to get an early seduce. It's just just wasting time. Yeah, that's unfortunate. And also, the, the bookmarking pretty much shuts it down. Because as long as you can see them approach the bookcase, you're okay. Yeah. They'd have to be able to right. get into the bookcase, get dumped it, and get out of there without being seen. And then also, it's the book's not gone. Like library. Yeah. yeah, a library, if you don't see them approach it, you might not actually get a good angle in the book. And if you do, you have to really sell out on it. But you're right here. Uh, the bookmarking, if you do it even a little bit, it's easy to do, and it's easy to notice after the fact. Yeah. Uh, also worth noting, by the way, that Screw Loose is more of a camping sniper. Uh, one of the few, few I don't want to say pure campers, because nobody's a pure camper, and he's not a pure camper either. But leans more that way than most. So the kind of idling in the beginning of this game. Game. a little counterintuitive oh boy look at that yeah yeah i'm gonna go back and look at that bug so it's an interesting timing so i'm gonna i'm gonna say uh minty might not know exactly where the the sniper's vision is being blocked on that one because i think the, the the way we approached that bug looked more confident that it wasn't at the right that wasn't at the it was at the blocking level than it actually was yeah right i think this might have been a misjudge of the shark because the spy's camera swings around and sees the shark coming and you're right it seems like they think top shark blocks this part or they don't understand that top shark uh and middle shark uh look the way they do and that's actually the easiest mistake to make in my in my opinion i still do that a lot i'll look up and i'll think twice i'll go is that middle shark or top shark and if i have to ask myself it's top shark, <laughs> shark is top. that if you're asking it's kind of like the green white swap fade distinction right uh, -huh. uh with the statue if i ask myself if it's green or white it's white Green is unmistakable. Right. Similarly, middle shark is obvious. If you're not sure, it's top shark. And in this case, it was top shark. But this also ties into what I said about that earlier game, which is that who bugs without the shark? Are they even going to be looking for something like this? Right now, it doesn't look like they were. Yeah. So it works. It seems to have worked as a Yomi play. Also, we we, we get out of there with a the delegate. Yes. Oh, and we can we go back? Okay, I'm curious why we do. Oh, we're just doing a seduce on this one. Oh, this, so this is really interesting. I'm actually pause right here. Um, I love the option we have here of leaving uh, before the drink even comes to us. So um, this is interesting. If you can um, get in there, get the delegate, the step away before they notice, and then you come back to bar, you request, and then before Toby offers and you walk away, that looks like it's impossible for you to have a delegate on. You have to do it kind of quick and then delegate pretty quick after you go in. But that would be really fun if we do that. I think in this case, uh, the plan was just, you know what, this is an awful path, but I really want this flirt because I already have the bug and I feel like it's clean and I don't have a flirt. I don't have enough flirt progress here. And that's the only thing I'm worried about right now is kind of blowing this game with the bug so clean potentially. Uh, mm -hmm. So I think that was just straight up. I want the flirt. Aquarium is chaos. Life is chaos. They're not going to see. All right. Well, um, we do we do end up delegating uh, pretty quickly when we get into the next conversation. Um, uh, and also it's one of the um, just in case people don't rec recognize it the reason why you don't see the delegate why you don't see them talking is because the person leaves immediately it's the only if you delegate to the only person in conversation you don't actually talk because they leave when you start talking and so the talk animation ends because you can't talk to no one so you there's not even like a start stop on that one I don't know. Sometimes I feel like we're talking to no one, but you're right. In the <laughs> game, it stops you from talking immediately, which is really, really cool, right? But on the other hand, it does mean that if they are watching you a little bit, this is kind of what I mentioned before about the purloin, right? It's really hard to get away with a purloin if you're being watched. This is that kind of purloin in particular. If you're being watched here, this is really obvious. If you're not, though, because it's such a counterintuitive time to do it, just like the bug was counterintuitive, it's really powerful, yeah. All right, so um, we I'm up two minutes. We've got the bug done. The, the purloin is on the way. Uh, we're probably going to end up flirting right now. Oh, then there's the other funny thing. I'm going to pause and talk about this for a quick second. Uh, how do you feel about avoiding being suspicious behind the shark for the rest of the game? 
Like, do you just make sure you're seen? Do you make sure that your feet stand still during the shark? Because then it becomes the problem of, uh, I don't want to look like I'm going for bugs. Like, kind of like, um, if you have already bugged on library, you probably don't want to be hanging out behind the pillar where there could be a reverse drive by opportunity just because you might have guilt by association. Yeah. Yeah, you kind of do want... Well, so it really depends on what you think your opponent's doing. I mentioned earlier that you can kind of snipe based on how vulnerable the Amba feels. Some people, maybe you'll credit the bug if you were behind uh, the shark with the Amba anywhere. So you don't necessarily know, but it, to whatever degree you do know, you want that to be what influences you, certainly. But yeah, all else being equal, stay the hell away if you can. Uh, it's just not always possible. All the things that are great about the shark for bugging purposes are bad about the shark when you want to look like you're not bugging. Indeed. All right, I'm going to play again at 152, and then... Perla uh, did not take, though. Ooh, that's a bummer. Yeah. Okay, so that actually... Um, Smallman uh, ruined it. Smallman ruined it. As as he, he taketh and he giveth. He ruins everything. Uh, so, unfortunately, that um, it's funny because that move back to get the seduction, then, would, um, uh, was mm -hmm. what probably timed it out. It cost us the purloin. Yeah. Yep. Now, then again, it also, it, it does free us from the, the, the confirmation of Perlain. So we could have, it's, it's one of those things where I've been, I have been saved before by Perlain not taking when I could see the sniper yes. watching them like recently, like, ooh, I'm glad yep. that timed out. Yep. After you make the decision, you realize they're on it and you think, glad I hope this doesn't take. Um, but speaking of take, Minty Rug goes up and direct Perloins instead. This is the third visit to the bar. And this time she says, you know what? Enough of this delegate nonsense. Interesting, and let's see if there's a specific frame on that one. Um, right next to Irish, the person who she delegated to. In fact, look at that. She leaves the second Irish comes in, but Irish, yeah, Irish had just entered with a drink. She leaves immediately after Irish enters. It's also great because there's shark passing. Uh, yes, at the very end, right. So passing the actual take, yeah. So this is actually a really good frame onto Irish. You say, okay, Irish, I can't frame you by delegating. I'll frame you by taking. Interesting. So uh, right now... It's basically, if we can BB, let's see, is there, uh, where's the real double agent? We would love for um, Irish to join uh, join us with a BB and just like, dare the 50-50, I guess. Um, if it's even 50-50, they might have gotten away with it pretty well. Screw uh, has not taken lowlights or anything. Uh, so I don't know if they have a whole lot of confidence about this right now. All right. Well, the BB is probably going to come off pretty soon here. Banana bread. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried. Okay, and so it's shot for a completely different reason. I guess just um, a general suspicion on something else. Because the other thing is, um, uh, we were we were not even neither a frame target nor we were one of the uh, top suspects. Yeah, I actually, so... sorry, I'm gonna jump into something real, real quick. Yeah, yeah. I do not like Minty pathing out of the conversation circle past Ambassador at the very end. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's needless, I think. Needlessly risky. Uh, so Seek had inspects done. That's a big deal for Screwless, I think, in this case. Uh, had inspects done and took a drink late, shortly after the Perlin had gone off, and then enters the conversation. The BB happens just afterwards with the shark covering Seek's head. So uh, it's a pretty good narrative. If you're writing a narrative about Seek being the spy, you got all the way to the end of the story. And there's those four mission again. Same ones. Same ones. Oh, that's, that's right. Oh man. So this is what you were saying before. This is the plurality. So it's not a it's not a majority. But if if a set of four missions are done, it's these yes. four more than any yes. other. Yes, but but that plurality is just over twenty percent of the time. About a fifth of the mission wins on Aquarium are these four missions. Interesting. All right. Um. All right. Well, let's go into what I think is the final game of yeah. Urand versus Falcon Hit. Yeah. Yeah. I've actually already casted this one. I don't remember a lot of the details, but there is a very specific reason I chose it that I'm, I'm pretty happy about. Interesting. All right. Well, I don't remember sniping this one. This is, this is, this is, this was in the regular season, right? Was this, did they play at the very end or something? Like they played each uh, other. They played each this, other after I played them, right? I'm going to say. This was, this was early May for whatever that's worth. I don't know if that is helpful or not. Um, let me see. What order did you play everyone in? Uran played Falcon Hit in week four. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. Week five, and then again in week eight. I think this was week eight. I think maybe. I think this is after you beat Uran in week seven. Okay, so I am I was going to say, I don't recognize this game, and I snipe 
every replay I can before I play someone, but I I'm going to... I, I think they played this the week after you played them for the second time. Gotcha. So there's no reason for me to snipe versus your end uh, at that point. Okay. So I don't know what this is, because a lot of the times if I'm casting one of the Platinum people, I will have already played it, and I it feels kind of weird, because I would have snipe, sniped it, but I guess at that point there was no reason for me to snipe versus your end because it was yeah, done. Yeah. Yep. Alrighty. Well, I'm going to go ahead and start in three, two, one, go. Uh, and one thing specific to your end is so right before we started the stream i was playing him to prep for uh, just prep some uh, aquarium ideas um i have a good sense of the way that your plays spy he plays totally differently on on aquarium and i love the fact that he does he's aggressive in totally different ways than he is on normal maps well i mean i think your just believes very strongly and it's hard to argue with them uh that this venue affords you opportunities to play differently case in point here it oh comes. there it is and you should take advantage, and that is just, yeah, leave conversation, do a microfilm, doesn't matter if it's green, red, white, or whatever, probably not red, I guess, and then you get right back to where you were with the shark. And you're nowhere near the bookcase when it happens. I love this. All right, so I'm stopping and uh, just making sure that I can't see absolutely anything. Yeah, okay, so Rian has a great sense of, he even is able to get, the only thing I can see is the arrow, he's able to get back in the conversation circle, so his head's not even like, like you can't even see the tuft of hair get back in there. Even if you were looking, yeah, I mean, you wouldn't be able to see anything at all. It's purely just like the crash bug and then return thing could be possible, could be happening behind the shark, but you have no idea. It's pure con conjecture, and that's not nearly as common as the crash bug is, so at this point, there's no suggestion that Falcon Hit even remotely suspects it. Probably hasn't considered it as a possibility yet, because the venue's just a few weeks old at this point. <laughs> All right, so um, of course we are probably going to be doing the rest of the microfilm after this. Now, microfilm just in general is one of the ones that uh you do you try to do part of it early because that way you don't have a highlight when you're doing it because it's much easier to track earlier on because the the, the sort of yomi around microfilm is as one of the least accomplished the missions if not the least accomplished mission in the game that uh if you don't have a highlight on you when you do it people don't expect it so they're not thinking about it and so then they're, that's exactly what they're doing they're doing it before they do the rest of their mission so the sequencing uh is great on this yeah, no, it absolutely is. And so far it's perfect, but there is a mistake coming up, which we noticed on cast at the time. But don't worry, there's going to be a happy ending to all this. There's a whole story behind this. Whole oh, wow. Yeah, so Yorand gets a fingerprint there. Look at this, just great progress. The first half of the microfilm is free. The BB was clean. You got a flirt in, you got a fingerprint in. You have so many ways to finish, and you're not a suspect at all right now. And there's no reason not to do this microfilm thing twice in one game. You don't want to do it twice in two games, because now they're going to be looking for it potentially, or at least maybe you don't want to. Uh, certainly not right away. But there's no reason not to do pretty much the exact same thing with the book here. Uh, it works just as well the second time, especially if they haven't suspected it at all. All right, well, um, and that absolutely makes sense where usually we can't get away with the same trick twice in a game on something because there's usually it doesn't matter. Like you can't bug behind shark twice because you should have gotten the bug the first time. But with microfilm, right. you do because it's split up into two different parts. Yes. And not only that, but like, what are you going to do? Everyone who has a book behind the shark becomes a suspect. Good luck with that. Right. Okay, so we do the exact same thing. We go in the exact same spot. I'm not sure this one was perfect like the first one, but it's really, really close. So might as well be. It's definitely clean. All right, um, so we are finishing up the microfilm here. We're going to finish up the flirt. Here's the mistake. Here's the mistake. What? Now, just where, what do you, where do you think my head's at right here? Why do I think this is a mistake? All right, I'm trying to figure this out. We're at 109, roughly. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ahead of... Okay, so yeah, yeah. 109, uh, and you're asking me why I think this is a mistake. Uh, just a second. Or a little earlier, as they're approaching the shelf. Uh, has the fingerprint change happened already? No. Uh, this is a mistake because you have the shark blocking you anyway. Oh, you I know. Yeah. With the microfilm animation you already did. And we said this at the time when we were casting, and I said, oh, geez, that gives away the advantage. That gives away the advantage. And if I recall, we'll see. I don't. Want, we don't really care about spoilers here exactly, but you could tell Uran's in a dominating position here uh, because they've only been credited with half a microfilm. What I love about this is that we cast Uran set. You can go ahead and hit play if you want. I'm fine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, under a minute left. We cast Uran set against Scallions the very next week. They did the same basic thing, except they didn't do that last step. They were not seen putting the book back. Okay, Uran does get shot, by the way. Wow. Yeah. I'd forgotten that part. Yeah. Um, 
and they were playing such a great game, and you wonder if maybe that was why, right? Um, but they played Scallions the following week, and they did basically the same thing, except they made sure that when they put the book back each time, it was unobscured by the shark, and it worked. And then they did something similar in the uh, diamond promotion match against Magician, same thing. And I thought it was so cool that Uran had this cool maneuver, and it just needed a tiny bit of workshopping, but then they iterated on it, and then it was basically perfect and worked really well. But I also like that you see all these little things. We always say the sniper only needs to catch one thing, right? Urand is playing a masterful spy game here. They do almost everything perfectly, and it's this interesting bit of tech done really well. But that one little thing at the end, maybe, is just enough to swing it. That one little thing. And it's not even like they got busted doing a thing. They just put themselves in a position where it could be imagined they were doing a thing, and it threw away what was just a brilliant, brilliant spy game. The nice thing is, the happy ending I mentioned is, of course, that once they iterated on it, they got to play that great spy game all the way through when it really counted, and it won them uh, a really big match. I got you. So the happy ending wasn't that you were a Falcon hit Stan, and just the happy ending is that you're no. in and Falcon wins. Yeah, yeah no, 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 no. The, the happy ending is that we got to see a cool little kind of bit of tech. Uh, we got to see a tiny flaw in it, and we got to see a spy adjust and, and improve uh, the very next week, and then it worked. And I just think it's a really cool idea, too. Uh, it does require, like we mentioned earlier with microfilm, though, this is a big time commitment. You can see there's only a minute left here at the end, even though Uran's been pretty busy. They haven't been idling. They had to really time commit to this move. They had to pace the whole game out. That is the downside. It looks like, why doesn't everyone just do this when you watch it? And that's why, because they actually had to work really, really hard to make sure that they were going to get everything done here. All right. So, yeah, no, and it's, the, it's a pretty quick talk also, so... Um, it could have just been getting antsy about that last little bit they had to do. So I'm guessing they were going to grab a fingerprint afterwards, uh, hoping that Ambassador was going to leave there. But you're right that um, we were mentioning earlier where sometimes you actually have to avoid being behind the shark. Just to, like after you've bugged, you don't want to be yeah. near the Ambassador. If you if you got a bug off clean without the help of the shark, for example, if you're behind yeah. the shark and you get behind the shark again a second time, I guess it doesn't really yeah. matter. And that's even harder. So, like, I mentioned that, you know, microfilm takes a while because if you're going to do the animation version, which is way better, you have to devote all this time to it. But if you're also doing something like this, where you deliberately don't want to be seen behind the shark, you have to time four different movements then properly. Four different movements. And then you have to do all the normal pacing of the game on top of that, too, and hope the BB lines up when you're doing it. So it's actually pretty tough. It looks perfect and seamless here because things lined up well and you're really committed to it until the very end. But... It's really, really tough. A lot of things have to line up properly to do it this smoothly. Indeed. All right. Well, uh, that takes us to the end of our of our of our games. Um, I don't know if we had any other things we wanted to say about Aquarium. Uh, this actually paced out pretty well. I want to say. Yeah. No. This is good, and I think we have a nice cross section of like what's different about this venue in particular. Uh, and I could throw a few more fun stats at you, just because yes. I like hearing you guess them. Um, so I mentioned earlier, Aquarium has the highest mission win rate. It's over 31%. That's mission win percentage. Uh, ballroom is second with 27%. So new venue already easiest to complete mission wins on, certainly. Uh, and I mentioned also that it has the second lowest timeout rate, 1.89%. Tan's about a half percent lower. So second lowest timeout rate, highest mission win completion rate. This is built for spies to room room around, basically, clearly. Uh, one of the numbers I really like, though, is that Spies on Aquarium reach the mission win countdown 46% of the time, which is the highest mark. Almost half of the games they reach countdown. And that is a little more surprising, because you'd think that with all that paranoia that you mentioned, you know, you might have a lot of Spy wins, but you figure there'd be a lot of Civ shots mixed in. There actually are not as many as you'd think. Most of the Spy win increase relative to other venues is from the mission win countdown, because, again, they get there almost half the time. And do you have any guesses as to what's second, by the way? Second in what? Second in percentage of games in which the spy reaches countdown. Uh, when the sky, spy reaches uh, balcony? Yep, balcony second. That's right. There are a few others around there, like the 40% range, like courtyards like that, ballrooms like that, balconies like that. But it's aquarium, then a little bit of space, then balcony, and then those other ones. So, I'm actually shocked that it's, there's anything above balcony. That's, yeah. that's, that's nuts, because balcony is just one where you almost always feel like you would shoot uh, during the countdown. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, this is the only... We still don't have any venues where half the games reach countdown. We still don't have that anywhere. But Aquarium has come the closest so far at 46%. And if the spies get better at it next season, it does seem possible. But I think the snipers are going to catch up, personally. Yeah, well, like... like 
One thing that was fascinating to me was watching, trying to watch Kaylee adapt to Aquarium. And so you can make, you can make adaptations of either trying to narrow in your camping and then just credit more in general to them because there are other aspects you can get a better, better sense of like fingerprint, uh, fingerprints a little bit rough on this map. I am also, I'm just don't complete fingerprint that much, but fingerprint is a little bit rough on this map. Uh, given the size, you really have to go out of your way to go grab them a lot of the time. You don't. There's not a lot of sibs that just kind of line up into the into getting two fingerprints, and then plus the other things that need to be like uh, correct double agent, um, inspect that sort of thing, right? So there, yeah. it's it's not as easy as on the other maps. We're like, um, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, courtyard actually is a little bit easier to get the the, the inspects on because there's there's fewer objects um, on the map mm. to touch. Yeah, well, I mean, maybe you have to get used to it, or maybe you can just ban it. Uh, it was the second most banned venue from the point onward when it was available. Uh, from that point, it was banned uh, about a third of the time. I think Tan was number one, if I recall correctly. But, this is cool too, third most picked over the same time period. Yeah, I actually, I think, I want to say in my own games, um, I really hoped that pwned noob was not going to pick um aquarium versus me so i banned tan instead and he picked tan or sorry picked aquarium on me and trashed me on it i want to i can't remember what week that is where is the competitive thing but um i definitely tried to ban it because i had almost no experience on it except for just getting destroyed by yish on it aquarium pwned noob is that what you're saying I think so. I think you might have it the other way around because I don't think. Yeah, you played Pwn Noob and Tan, but not Aquarium. Oh, okay. So I banned. Ah, yeah. so I spent my I spent my ban on Aquarium instead yeah. of Tan. Okay. I think that's it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he singled it against you once and doubled it the other time. And I think. Let oh, me see it was here. Falcon Hit. Falcon Hit is the dirty Falcon person hit. that uh, picked Aquarium versus me. I know that. Although it didn't go that badly. One for one for four. I'll take that Aquarium honestly. That's not too bad. Yeah, you played T uh, Tan against Pwn Noob six times and lost every game. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty rough. Yeah, pretty rough. no, I uh, I I do not have the best grasp of Tan for sure because while well, while while Aquarium. Uh, has the shark and whatnot i feel like i can still play sort of my game on it Tan, i haven't wrapped my mind around i have not played it enough hmm. well you know i know this guy he and i like to do these analyses of venues to help people get better <laughs> at them if you're not that great at Tan, we could consider making that next this could be the little nick fury post credit sequence where we tease the next movie that that sounds pretty good, and that sounds like a good way to end it. Is uh, maybe maybe Tan could be the next one. I don't know if there will be another one that kind of stands out in the, in the next few weeks. It is one of the most interesting we'll maps to consider. Like I don't know what we'll ever do if we get to a courtyard uh, uh, cast. I think we'd have I, to like I don't, I don't curate know. the hell out of those ones. Yeah, no promises on Tan, but this is just me coming up to you and going, "Hello, Slappy. I'd like to talk to you about the Tan initiative." Right. Okay, well, um, I think that this was a great one. I think that the, the time was a little bit less punishing for us where we weren't running out of steam right here at the <laughs> end. Uh, and I think we, I liked the things we talked about. Uh, my, my personal favorite thing is the, uh, the thing on the, the low lighting uh, that we were able yes. to get something out of that for all maps, but especially relevant on Aquarium. Um, yes, I will. I will officially agree that you had the single best point of the cast, definitely about the nature of low lights coming from a place of comfort. I think that's really good, and I'm going to be thinking about that. I think the rest of the day. Well, yeah, no, I think well, it came from uh, it came from you talking about it, and I think that um, the comfort line that you added onto it makes more sense and it's a little bit cleaner way of putting it. Um, I also like. Uh, uh, I was a little bit worried on the first couple of games that we were just going to see fairly clean games that didn't really need the shark. And then just kind of like, there's that general level of paranoia so spies can just get away with more. Um, but, uh, but man, Urand and, um, uh, uh, screw, and screw. Yeah. yes. Screw was, had a great sense of the shark and so did Urand. Um, I had, I guess Urand's only thing in that game was having not, not thinking about where the shark was, not worrying about the shark once they were done using it rather than using as the double-edged sword. Yes, right, correct. Yeah, just like the Amba after you've bugged, you know, you're not done with that anymore. You still have to be aware of them, just like you don't want to sidle up next to your seduction target after the seduce is done. You're not actually done with the mission when you're done with the mission. Or if you snuck a fingerprint early in the game, got your second fingerprint, yep. and then accidentally picked up another fingerprintable statue at the end and get shot. Exactly right, exactly right. And that is th that is one of my favorite little things about Spy Party 2, is that you're not actually done with those things when you think you are. 
All right. Well, um, that is it for me. Uh, I believe there's going to be a cast for Summer Cup tomorrow. Do we know anything to plug on that? Uh, yeah, just tomorrow afternoon, usual time. Uh, the times have to change sometimes because we're still kind of figuring it all out. The uh, cast lengths are varying. So just check the Discord, but standard, you know, Sunday afternoon should be three more matches, I think it's going to be. Yeah, and the group stages, we are uh, about halfway done now with the Summer Cup group stages. And halfway, uh, actually, I should say it's four weeks total leading into it. I think there might be a break in there some way. Uh, but we're about to be done with two of the three. So in a lot of these divisions, you're either going to know who's in, who's out, or you're going to know which remaining match it's all going to hinge on. So you definitely want to be checking those out over the next couple of weeks because it's going to solidify very, very quickly. All right, sounds great. Well, Warning Track, thank you for joining me. Thanks to everybody who's tuning in. Uh, there are other slow casts available for uh, for VODing. Um, I want to say we've done Veranda and oh, what else have we done? We done we definitely did one ballroom. Ballroom, ballroom, that's right. Ba we ballroom first, veranda second. They're both on Twitch, and they've both been exported to the official YouTube channel, as this one will be shortly. So you can watch them however you play, uh, however you care to stream. Yes, and I, I I don't mean to kind of toot my own horn on this one, but they are one of the more vaudable ones because they are not based upon a particular time frame of competitive spy party. Rather, they're just two people talking about their opinions about the game and being willing to just you know, blather on for an hour or two hours. Layer by layer. Layer by layer. Oh, my God. Okay, speaking of that, um, I'll be starting that up. Thank you so much for joining us, and I'm out. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow. We just gonna peel it back layer by layer. Yeah. We gonna take this slow.